a campaign of messages to Palestinian Arabs. In recent days, U.S. Special Envoy to the Middle East, Jason Greenblatt, has published a series of criticisms against the leadership in Gaza and the Palestinian Authority. So if you're getting ready, Jason Greenblatt, working for the White House, I mean, he's a Jewish man, right? Yes. There's no secret here. The whole Trump administration, Mideast peace plan is the whole team are Jewish. It's, it's, again, it's stacking the deck. It, it's saying the game is rigged. It, it wouldn't be any different if you were negotiating between, um, you know, Indians and Chinese over conflict. You can't have all Indians and all Chinese on your mediating team. You got to bring in Africans. You got to bring somebody in who's not part, not part of the conflict. Okay, that's just common sense. Okay, so, so Jason Greenblatt is sending out tweets. We're talking. We're we're one month away from releasing the plan, and Jason Greenblatt is blasting the Palestinian leaders in Gaza and the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank. So I read this article earlier, it confused me because he was saying in there, look, this the Hamas lost this war, folks, a long time ago. I mean, they're they're done. But he was sending that to the Palestinian people. So basically, he's telling them, listen, the guys you hope were hoping that were going to pull you out of this, uh, they're they're out of it. And he's tweeting in Arabic. Yes. yes. And in Hebrew, too. Yes. So it's a propaganda campaign. For the, to hit the millennial crowd Yes, in there. it's a propaganda campaign. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm going to go one more. Let's okay. see what else is up here next. Arut Shiva. Let me see where this starts. Oh, this is really fascinating. Jordan-Israel negotiations based on President Trump's long-awaited peace plan seem increasingly likely to happen following retired Jordanian ambassador and former editor of the Jordan Times, Walid Saadi, flagging Jordan's legal and sovereignty claims in the West Bank oh. and East Jerusalem. Mr. Saadi, in an op-ed article in the Jordan Times on August 12th, forcefully argued that Jordan's decision to cut off all legal and administrative relations with the disputed territories in July 1988 did not amount to Jordan ceding its claims to sovereignty. Wow. Sovereignty over what? The West Bank and Gaza. All right, this is Jordan's former ambassador. There's no way he wrote this article. The, the Jordan Times, its major investor is the Jordanian government pension fund. They're not going to write against that, are they? Who do you think controls it? Who do you think is running the pension fund? King Abdullah. Yes. So what I'm saying is there's no way that this former ambassador a high-level Jordanian wrote this article without having it cleared by King Abdullah. What he's saying here is, hey, everybody, pay attention. Jordan is the last nation that had legal rights to the West Bank and Gaza. And did they just give up those rights? Well, or are we just it, taken it away was, from it? It was called 1960, 1967 war. The 1967 war with Israel, that's what, how Israel got Gaza and right. the West Bank. And the United Nations and the United States, no nation has ever recognized Israel's conquest of the West Bank and Gaza. That's why the Jewish lobby in the United States in recent months particularly our Florida Congressman DeSantis, who's running for governor, yes. was pushing a bill, a resolution in Congress this year right. to get the U.S. Congress 
to recognize the West Bank in Gaza as legitimate Israeli territory. Because legally, if this issue went to some type of tribunal court in The Hague, some type of world court, the, the legal paper trail shows that Jordan is the owner of the West Bank and Gaza, and that Israel illegally attacked Jordan, took the land, and has occupied it illegally since 1967. And what the Jordanian ambassador said in this op-ed was, I'm going to remind everybody that the West Bank in Gaza belongs to Jordan. It's an incredible claim. If you think about this, going to the two possibilities you've laid out here, that means Jordan, not even the Palestinian Authority, Jordan is the most powerful wild card in this negotiation because they, as you mentioned, have legal rights. That is our territory. So that's what sovereignty so would means. not the solution be give Gaza and the West Bank back to Jordan and now the Palestinians are Jordanian citizens. That would seem to be the best solution. But and they have, they have King Abdullah as their leader. And he's going to be a good, a good king over their territory, over their homes. He'd get the electricity back on. He'd get the schools running. He'd do everything. He'd get the refugees out of Jordan. Get and the back refugees, of- bring them back. That would be the ideal solution. And the United Nations would have to say... Jordan owns that land. It was taken from them by Israel. I'm telling you, this this is a powerful, powerful entry of Jordan into this issue one month before the plan comes out. But they're being cut out right now. Yes, because this is why. This is why he's King Abdullah has not been consulted. Because if he makes a legal claim on this, he would likely win. Okay. I'm going to, I'll take, I I, uh, I do these scenarios. So I need one more person in this. (laughs) Where's Gator? uh, One of our camera people. (laughs) Okay, Gator, all right. So you guys are fighting. All right. You guys are fighting over a piece of land. All right. And you guys have been calling each other names. You've been dissing each other's mothers. You've been all kinds of ugly, nasty stuff and just horrible, okay? My mother? Yeah, calling names and just, you know, and throwing rocks and just, just downright ugly. And you guys are fighting. And you got, you got somebody else trying to come up with a claim, I mean a plan to work this out for you two guys. Mm-hmm. And over here stands somebody who says, I have the deed then we're going to talk I'm to the him. only one with the deed and says he was living there and then you stole it. <laughs> so he was a squatter. That he I, was a I squatter. squatter. <laughs> Not a, yeah, but he he was living there. You came in and s- stole it. But I still have the legal deed. And, and that's I want King Abdullah. Yes. And I want both of you. <laughs> you know. To recognize I am the king. And that's my land. Will King Abdullah go to the United Nations and say, I want Israel evicted from the West Bank and Gaza? Will the UN enforce a rule like because you well, gotta ask that is let's 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 can we go a little bit more? Yes, okay. we, I think there's one other story okay. that's relevant to this. Yeah, there is, and I'm gonna skip some of these other ones here. Um, Right hang here. on, hang on, yeah. Where is it? Okay. United Nations General, Sec- Secretary General, outlines four options to protect Palestinians under Israeli occupation. Secretary General Antonio Guterres said in a new report that options to protect Palestinian civilians under Israeli occupation range from establishing an armed military or police force to deploying civilian observers or beefing up the UN presence on the ground. This is the Globe Globe and Mail newspaper in Canada. The UN chief stressed in a report circulated Friday evening that every option would require the cooperation of Israelis and Palestinians 
a sustained cessation, cessation of hostilities and additional resources. So it goes in here, he talks about a more robust UN presence on the ground, additional resources and better access to ensure the well-being of civilians, dedicated civilian observers, physical protection. This is where he said the UN could provide armed military or police forces if given a mandate by the UN Security Council to deter and, if necessary, ensure the safety of the civilian population of the Palestinians. So the Secretary General of the United Nations suddenly, I haven't heard anybody at the UN say a peep in years about this. And now, all of a now sudden, talking about sending troops, troops. There. all right, I'm telling you something's about to happen here. And I'm not sure it's going to go down the way Israel thinks it's going to go. I would not be surprised if a move is made to censor Israel for taking the land, ordering Israel to get out of the West Bank and Gaza, and the introduction of UN troops to protect the Palestinians from Israeli Defense Force soldiers. Rick, I'm, wow, I don't see Israel sitting idly by on that. Well, they're about to start a war with Iran. They can't make too many enemies. How, how many wars are you going to start? This oh, is wow. going to be a tense fall, Rick. That, this this yes. whole subject has blown my mind because you think, again, just the position Jordan has played in this. We thought for the longest time that Jordan and Israel maybe were making, oh, they were friends. They were allies yeah. in a sense. You're laying out a scenario where Jordan may be looking to retake what's theirs. Yeah, he's got the legal right. He has the title indeed. The West Bank and Gaza belongs to Jordan. 